Greetings, dear friends, and welcome to day four of the 10 days of prayer with Jesus. Let us pray as we go into our brief reflection. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Father, for days of reflection and prayer and devotion. Father, we know that it is the desire of your heart that not just the 10 days, but the rest of our lives would become a season of fervent prayers and passion and desire and a hunger for the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for this blessing. Please help us to learn to communicate with you more. For we know that the Father's heart longs to hear from his children. Speak to us, please, through your word. Give us strength to serve you. We plead for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome once again, friends. And let us go to our study of day four of these 10 days of prayer. And I'd like you to come with me to the book of John chapter three. John chapter three. Friends, we studied yesterday about God's desire for his children to be a living sacrifice. Friends, not just to put sins on the altar, but to put ourselves on the altar and say, Lord, whatever does not please you, just remove it from my life so that my life becomes a simple outliving of the perfect will of my heavenly father. And so friends, the real question is, what keeps us from doing this? Yesterday, we also studied if we invite Jesus in our hearts, he can give us the strength to lay ourselves down on the altar of God as living sacrifices for the Lord. So that friends, we day by day, moment after moment, are found reflecting Jesus to the world. My mind goes to John 3 as I think about today's subject. And John 3 reminds us of the story of Nicodemus and that wonderful story that really brings out the need of God's people in these last days. How do we take the message of revival and make it really practical? What's keeping us? We know the truth of revival. We know the need of revival. And yet we fail to bring it into our practice. We fail to bring it into our everyday lives. What is God teaching us through the story of Nicodemus? Come with me to John chapter 3. And the Bible tells us, John 3 verse 1, there was a name, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Now keep this in mind because this title of Nicodemus, he's a ruler of the Jews, is going to prove to be very important to understanding Nicodemus, my friends. He came to Jesus by night. And he says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. So friends, Jesus' response is Nicodemus speaking and praising God, perhaps trying to get him into a deep spiritual conversation by calling him Rabbi, by, uh, by encouraging him, sort of praising him by saying, surely you are a man from God because no one could do these things except God be with him. Jesus, not being carried away by that praise, says to him, son, you must be born again. For except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus, keep in mind, a ruler of the Jews. He is a man of high prestige, knows Hebrew scripture so well. A Pharisee, they had memorized the first five books of the Bible. He's not able to get the spiritual truth that Jesus is imparting. He says, except a man be born again, he cannot enter. He cannot even see, forget about entering. He cannot even see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus doesn't understand this. He says, wait, how can a man be born again? You don't expect me to enter my mother's womb the second time, right? Jesus says, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He's emphasizing the need to be born, the need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in verse 6, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And then he explains. He says, don't, don't marvel at the fact that I've said to you, you must be born again. Let me explain what I mean. Verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth. You hear the sound thereof, but you canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the spirit. So Jesus is trying to teach Nicodemus, Nicodemus, you need to be born again. You need to be born again. In other words, you need to be born of the Holy Spirit. You need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. The word baptized means to be immersed. You need to be immersed in the Holy Spirit. 
He says, Nicodemus, let me explain. The wind blows. You can't see where it's coming. You can't see where it goes. So how do you know the wind's blowing? When you look out the window, you see that the leaves on those branches, they're moving. They're moving with the wind. Then you see leaves that come off the leaf, that come off the tree. Sometimes the wind is so strong, the leaf comes off the tree and is just flying with the wind. And Jesus, Nicodemus, I'd like you to get that, to be born again, is to be like that leaf on that tree that allows the wind to move it in the direction and to sway it in the direction that the wind would have it go. And he's saying, this is how the ministry of the Holy Spirit is. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. This is the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Nicodemus. You have to be like that leaf, allowing the Spirit of God to move you in the direction that the Spirit would have you go for. You cannot use the Spirit. The Spirit of God has to use you. In other words, friends, Nicodemus, you can't dictate revival in your life. You can't dictate the workings of God in your life. You have to allow God to work in your life as, as it best pleases him. For you ought to know it is going to be for your good and his great glory. You see, friends, the challenge is Nicodemus, as verse 1 tells us, is a ruler. He's not used to receiving orders. He's used to giving orders. Are you still there, friends? Nicodemus is an individual who can't seem to grasp the spiritual truth. Lord, I've not, I've not been in the habit of receiving orders and to go where the Spirit leads because I'm the one who tells people where to go and what to do. So this is, you want to understand, perhaps a difficult concept for Nicodemus to keep his grasp upon. So Nicodemus in verse 9, he says, Lord, really, I mean, how can these things be? I, I'd really like this. I'd really, really like this. But how can these things really be? Jesus gives a powerful answer, though. If you read down with me, if you read down with me in verse 14, Jesus says, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's really beautiful. Lord, I'd really like this. Nicodemus finally comes to a point, Lord, I know I've been studying all of this. And Jesus asks him the question. He, he, says, he says to him, are you a master? Verse 10, he says, are you a master of Israel and you know not these things? You know, all of this learn, all of scripture and all this knowledge and all this understanding, and you don't understand this unique heavenly principle. Nicodemus admits the ruler has humbled himself and really would like to know how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, you remembered in the wilderness, as Moses lifted up the serpent, so will the Son of Man be lifted up. How did people live? People lived as they looked at the serpent lifted up. So will people live as they look to Jesus lifted up. Nicodemus, you wanted to know how to be born again, how to receive that infilling of the Holy Spirit. Look to Jesus. Spend time with Jesus. Give him your heart. And as you look to him, the one who will be nailed for your salvation, you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit through him. For those of you who have been with us, you would remember in 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 4, the Bible says, the rock from which the Israelites were drinking was Christ. That rock represented Christ. And the water came out of that rock when that rock was smitten. Isaiah 53 tells us that the smiting of the rock represented the judgment of death, the judgment of God, the judgment rod of God that ought to come on us, but Jesus took that upon himself. And we know, friends, from, from the Bible in John 7, verses 37 to 39, Jesus likens water to the Holy Spirit. So as Jesus, the rock, received the condemnation of death, it is out of him, it is because of him, it is because of his sacrifice, rather, that we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Friends, it's really amazing. Nicodemus is reminded to be with Jesus. And if he is with Jesus, he will receive the riches of the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, friends, that's something God would like us to understand. We know the need for revival, and we would like to bring it to daily life, but there's an unwillingness. And God is saying, if we spend time with Jesus, if we give our life to Jesus, if we pay attention to Jesus and plead for the Holy Spirit in the book of Numbers, again, as they're standing at another rock, Jesus said, this time you will not smite the rock, speak to the rock and you will receive the water. Similarly, friends, if we speak to the rock, Jesus Christ, he will give us the gift of his Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit of God can make revival real. Not just a theory, not just a concept, but an everyday experience of our lives. God would like us to catch that, friends. God was like, a, like us to receive the Holy Spirit so that we can receive genuine revival and live out that revival in our lives. Look to Jesus, friends, as he's lifted up, as you keep your eyes on him. Perhaps you don't understand how it all works. Are you willing to stop being a ruler and start being a leaf on a tree, allowing the Spirit to move you in the direction he would have you go so that your life can magnify God before the world? Friends, I want to pray that you take that to heart today. Take that to your families today. Take that to your churches today. And let revival begin. Friends, I firmly believe revival has to begin at homes before it can be seen in the church. It has to begin at the family altar before it can be seen at the church altar. May at your family altars, may your loved ones and yourself be on the altar. Be an example for your family by being that individual on the altar of God saying, God, take away anything that does not please you. And as you look to him, as he moves in you, gives you the strength as you abide in him and he abides in you, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit is given to them who obey him. First John tells us that as we receive Jesus, we know we have Jesus if we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's really amazing. Receiving Jesus is receiving the Holy Spirit. Receiving the Holy Spirit is receiving Jesus. It's so beautiful, this harmony that is between Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And so friends, I pray that your eyes would stay fixed on him. He is our only hope of salvation and glory. Let us bring that to prayer to God. Let us pray. Dear Father, thank you again. Thank you for this gift. Thank you for this blessing. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you for calling us yours. And thank you for reminding us that Jesus is our hope of salvation. Help us to look to him. Help us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Father, help us so that we too can present Jesus in his brightest light to the world. That revival becomes our daily bread. And that all who see us, see us live revived lives for Jesus. May your name be praised, my God. Bless my brethren. Bless their families. And please fill these homes with your Holy Spirit so that they become lighthouses in dark corners of this earth. We claim these blessings by faith in Jesus' name. Amen.